okay so in the last classes we were discussing briefly about some background you know not only for this subject but as an overall so as of now we discussed about uh, the you know errors in numerical method here also we have discussed a uh, general flow structure general flow structure of problem solving and while solving this problems we found that there are some inherent errors then we looked at uh some review of c programming aspects which might be needed for a general code development as such however you can use uh, simple for loops do loops arrays to just build simple programs there is no error. then we have looked at uh, uh some research methodology so in the research methodology we have uh, seen that there is a pattern of introduction okay then you have governing equations then you have methodology then you have <coughs> maybe a problem definition problem definition results and discussions and conclusions and references conclusions and references so we we now know that this general procedure has to be followed okay you need these background tools and then we have given you some list of the textbooks list of the reference books for the course so in this uh, computational heat transfer the govern equations are so important that we need to spend some time on these governing equations okay we should know uh, what these governing equations are and how these governing equations are coming from okay. now we know that a matter for example matter is made up of solid liquid gases and other states like plasma now this matter is made up of atoms and molecules right okay 
so suppose this is certain a part of a matter then it has these molecules okay it consists of molecules at microscopic level isn't it so let us say that these molecules are running from i okay so i may be running from 1 2 to n okay now to uh, know the state of this uh, whole system we have to know the states of this individual particles so in mechanics in mechanics what do you do we know that the <coughs> relationship between force and acceleration okay this relationship is used for individual particles so fi mi ai this equation can be used for one and then it can be summed up okay it can be summed up for all okay so that is a procedure we generally use so so far so good we may think that oh this is okay we can work with this but if you have a, at least you know one one mm by one mm one mm one mm and one mm cube in this cube itself we may be having more and more number of particles maybe 10 to the power 25 number of particles within this small volume and if you are talking about a large volume for which you will want to solve then you might come across with solving many many particles okay infinite number of particles which may not be feasibly possible possible to solve so to remit to do a, a remedy to these things there is an hypothesis called as continuum hypothesis okay and building on this continuum hypothesis continuum you have a continuum mechanics so instead of viewing this matter as a discrete uh, you know collection of discrete particles it is considered as a continuous okay so it is considered as continuous so suppose you have this uh, matter then it is assumed that it is continuous throughout okay so to build that continuum mechanics assumption what is done is in continuum mechanics we assume that the uh, it is continuous through these points okay not particles so all if any point you see there is a close point to it and like that but what 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 is a point okay what what do you mean by a point here so we mean by point is a small volume is a small volume the small volume in this where you have some representative particles you have some representative particles okay but not all the uh, all the uh, not all the particles some representative particles similarly at other point you will have some representative particles some representative particles like that like okay so so that what you, you can define some properties of the system okay mathematically you should be able to define properties of the system so um, here suppose uh, the density for example you are measuring a density 
of the uh, this um, <coughs> rail system then if you go to very small uh, kind of region where you have sparse uh, material uh, uh, these particles then you 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 cannot measure them correctly okay so you will get a fluctuations in a lot of changes in the density values at very very small level but as soon as you go to some bulk sizes then you will find that you get a average or you, you, you get a constant value of density and then later on at some point of time you start getting different values of density okay now when you say that this particular material then we are talking about this particular part of the volume this particular value of the volume okay i think this is a log plot this particular part of the volume we are talking about where we have a sufficient number of particles and the density is constant it is neither fluctuating this way neither fluctuating that way but if you take the uh, other particles into account and then there is a density change then uh, since you are talking about large volume then you will you will see the density change okay so by this then you can define density like density can be defined like what it is it is mass per unit volume okay so in the limit in the limit delta v tends to this delta v it's not zero delta v prime delta m delta v can be defined as no, dm d, dv okay rho is equals to dm dv so by this way we can define the concepts and then we can proceed in the continuum mechanics result. Now, in the continuum mechanics, now how do we uh, you know proceed again? Okay, so there are two views in classic mechanics. One view is called as Lagrangian view. Okay. One view is called as Lagrangian. Another view is called as Eulerian view. Okay. So, in a Lagrangian view, uh, we consider a material volume okay so we consider a material volume or it is also called as closed system or it is also called as closed system <coughs> in terms of thermodynamics you have seen that these terminologies are there closed system okay so you have a matter and you have these points you say so what do you do in lagrangian framework all these particles at all times will be tracked so suppose the these these particles are there or now we say points are there okay material points are there in this uh, material volume then same number of particles will be there at other time same same particles will be there at other time they may have changed their position but same number of particles will be there at other time so this is the scene at t and this is the scene at t plus delta t okay so if you are talking about this 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 particular material which has changed now here then how do we talk about this we need a reference frame so if this is a reference frame 
x and y then we define a position vector so this position vector from this zero position vector r defines its position and we track that so at any other time another position vector will define the this at t plus delta t and r at t okay so through this conceptualization we uh, can define this uh, you know in a in a lagrangian framework so the basic thing in lagrangian framework is same material volume remains and it is tracked as it progress in a time so this same i am tracking this particular uh, material point uh, as it pass through t t plus delta t like that similarly all other particles will also be tracked okay so maybe this particle maybe this particle now it changed to this this point and i am tracking that also so i need another position vector for that and i am tracking that okay so let its path be like this so there may be various paths and we need position vector to define all these uh, points okay. so here we will we can define uh, say for example acceleration acceleration of now we say fluid element fluid element acceleration of fluid element is equals to dv by dt if it would have been a particle then how would have defined it a particle acceleration of a particle but we are not defined like that dv by dt this is a notational difference only okay if you are talking about a particle particle of this nature if you are talking about particle of this nature then we are talking about the dv by dt and if we are talking about the fluid element fluid element of this nature okay where we wanted to have acceleration uh, know the acceleration of this fluid element then we say a different notation capital d by dt this is called a substantial derivative okay this is also defined as del v del t plus T dot del V. Okay. V is a velocity with which it may be moving. Okay. This this particles uh, this particle is moving or the the you know uh, material volume may be moving. Now we are talking about materials as a this bowl, uh, you can consider at as a you know the material uh, fluid element and then you can talk about its velocity also okay so the point i wanted to make sure that you will see the differences uh, in using the notations like total derivative like this okay now another point of view is eulerian so this eulerian point of view uh, considers a control volume or a particular you know part of the system which is fixed okay which is fixed it is not uh, it is it is not in the sense um, it is not closed system it is an open system rather than saying fixed we can say uh, the open system so open system
where in open system we fixed our intention on a particular location okay and then we observe what is coming in and what is going out okay so something can come in something can go out that is open system in a closed system nothing is entering everything remains same the same amount of particles will be there in other time here it may not be possible in other time the particles they might have passed okay at t is equals to 0 you may have this particle but at another time you may not have this is at another time the same uh, it is the same control volume the control volume can also change the shape here also it may change the same so at any other time t greater than 0 this may not be there some other other will be there okay some other may be there but here it is not whatever they are there they will be there okay so this eulerian framework where uh, is found to be more convenient than lagrangian framework in fluid mechanics okay uh, this framework is more convenient in fluid mechanics okay in fluid mechanics uh, you have the fluid which is uh, continuously moving okay or um, you have the gas which may you know uh, we cannot identify so you have a, a shear rate in fluid mechanics you have a shear rate and um, it, it makes the fluid so complicated that it is very difficult to follow the uh, fixed entity of the part uh, uh, fixed entity of the material but it is very easy to follow through this Eulerian framework. Even our experiments, we in experiments, suppose this is a pipe, then this is a pitot tube, then we fix a pitot tube at a fixed location. We do not move the pitot tube along the direction of the flow or whatever, wherever. So, most of the time, we also get the experimental results mostly in a Eulerian framework okay so it is more convenient to work in uh, Eulerian framework in fluid mechanics but <clears throat> but all the laws <clears throat> all the laws okay all the fundamental laws if you have to say they are given in fundamental laws they are like f is equals to ma given in Lagrangian framework. Okay, so what do you do if you want to work in Eulerian framework? and uh, we we are everything's are given in lagrangian framework then we need a some connection between so we need so we need a connection between a connection between between the lagrangian framework and Eulerian framework. And the connection, the connection, the connection is achieved through a theorem 
called as Reynolds transport theorem. So this Reynolds transfer theorem comes to a rescue to make a connectivity between this um, Eulerian and Lagrangian framework. Okay. Okay, so how how we do that? Okay, how you find the relationship uh, of that nature? So we start with consider a a control volume okay so consider a control volume so right now you can give some another this reynolds transfer theorem rtt we are looking at that so consider a control volume Okay. It is a volume of any shape. We say it is a control volume CV. Okay. And this control volume may be moving with some velocity U. And it, it, it is bounded by a surface. So, what is a bounded surface in case of 2, 2D, whatever you are seeing? This particular bounded surface is called as control surface okay control volume control surface cv means control volume and cs means control surface okay and surface is identified so surface can be uh, oriented in particular way it may be facing toward east faced north face south face like that okay so what is a surface so surface is identified through its unit vector so wherever this unit vector is pointing you see the orientation of that surface okay so unit vector pointing uh, representing the surface now let there is a quantity phi okay this phi which is a which is a property uh, which is a property of property of the volume okay of the volume volume of material we have chosen okay so what what type of property it is what type of property it is in thermodynamic sense this is a extensive property because it is dependent upon the mass of the system extensive property now we know that we can also represent per unit mass basis any extensive property in terms of intensive property okay let that intensive property is phi okay so phi is an intensive property
property which is nothing but the capital phi per unit mass okay now our objective here is to find a relationship rtt is nothing but finding a relationship our objective our objective is to find out a relationship between a capital phi and small phi okay is to find relationship between phi and small phi okay and by definition we know that this can be represented like this so phi can be represented since this is intensive property uh, per unit mass so what i can say that if it is a per unit mass if something is per unit mass then if i multiply by it by total mass i can get a total phi okay total over okay this is a per unit mass so for this particular mass here for example rho phi is that entity and if i sum over all the control volume uh, then i get this total okay that is what mean meaning of this integral cv rho phi and since it is a integral volume integral we have to write here say volume is represented by dx so rho phi dx where rho is the material density and dx is where rho is material density and x is infinitesimally small volume okay the rtt we can uh, write the reynolds transfer theorem this has a basis from leibniz you know theorem so uh, we won't go into that we would like to use this reynolds transfer theorem which is a link between lagrangian and eulerian framework as a tool to derive difference equation so it goes like this d phi dt or for our notational as you said we can write it like d phi by dt is equals to integral cv okay, del del t of rho phi dx since it is a volume integral plus integral over the surface the quantity in that mass and the movement of that mass quantity mass uh, through the surface okay so since it is moving through u it can be moving through u 
either it is go coming in uh, in the control system or going out of the control system or the whole system is moving so the entity mass which is on the surface what is coming in and what is going out uh, that can be represented by this u n t s u dot this dot should not be so dot product between two vectors okay so this is the general uh, theorem here the first term this is called as production rate of total property this is called as production rate production rate of total property phi is a total property capital phi is a total property and the first term shows the changes in phi changes changes in small phi through throughout throughout the control volume throughout this control volume what are the changes happen over the over the time okay changes in phi throughout the control volume and then this is the net net means it is integrated so net rate rate of uh, you know net outflow of phi at c net outflow of phi small phi at control surface okay so whatever is happening inside this control volumes and whatever is happening in console control surface that relation that theorem is nothing but the reynolds transport theorem and this reynolds transport theorem gives us uh, connectivity by defining so our objective is now to define define phi capital phi and small phi small phi suitably suitably the governing equations of equations of fluid flow and heat transfer and heat transfer what are these fees can be or capital phi can be okay they can be mass momentum energy okay they can be mass momentum mass of the you know, material volume we have considered momentum associated with that ma material and then the energy associated with that material so this govern equation depending on the physics of the problem the govern equations will either mass momentum or energy or combination of this set can be obtained okay so we'll see how we do that so first conservation principle or axioms or these things uh, these axioms are something which do not change they are there they are there uh, no experiments have found um, that 
and of the shared content. What do you mean by annotation, Pratik? Where do you need annotation? I'm declining it, huh? Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. You're asking for annotations. Sorry, sir. Uh, it it is happened. It is a mistake, actually. Okay. Hello. Yeah, so I have declined it huh? because there is no need yes, of yes. notations. Okay, so what are those uh, laws? Okay, so those laws then related to these uh, properties which should be uh, conservating. And it is found that the mass is always conserved. Conservation of mass is there. Conservation of momentum is there. And conservation of energy is there. So, if you know that a certain thing which is not changeable in nature, uh, with that we can uh, build, a, you know, governing laws of that particular physics. Okay. So, conservation of mass, momentum, energy, they are like, uh, you know, axioms or uh, they found unique to all the physical systems we see around, okay. So, it is better to build on this, the governing equations and if we solve these governing equations, then we can get uh, suppose we are talking about this room, for example, and we wanted to know what are the velocities u, v, w at this point. Also, what is the temperature at this point? So, uh, similarly, at any other point also. Then, how do I know this u, v, w, and t, and any other variable at all these points? Okay, so to get these properties u, v, t, we need some mechanism, okay, some law or some guiding principle to this particular thing which is happening in the room. Whatever is happening inside a room, we should know a mathematical equation of it. We, we should know the mathematical equation of this physics, okay. That is what we were saying. The physics is converted into mathematical equation and then mathematical equations has to be converted into some numerical model in, ter in terms of computational heat transfer. Numerical method or model will be applied and you know the programming and then solution like that. So, how do we build this mathematical model? That mathematical model is coming through this conservation of mass, conservation of momentum, and conservation of energy principle. What is conservation of mass? So, from your previous knowledge, we know that conservation of mass, mass can neither be created nor destroyed. Conservation of Mass. Except you, if you are not talking about the very, very small scale phenomena like nuclear reactions, so we are still in a continuum mechanics domain and disregarding the relativistic nature. So, say now. Uh, capital Phi is capital Phi is your total mass of the control volume, total mass of control volume. So, this is your control volume and total mass is Phi and say the total mass per unit, you know, mass total mass per unit mass uh, is 1 isn't it total mass per unit mass then it will become 
uh, one. Then we know that conservation of mass says that any change in phi d phi by dt is equals to zero. Okay, there is no change in phi. Total mass of this control volume remains same. So d phi by dt essentially uh, zero means phi is a constant. It remains constant. Derivative of a constant is zero. So phi remains constant. It is not zero. Total mass of the CV remains constant. Okay, so it remains constant at all. So d phi by dt is zero. So from this RTT. If you if you substitute in RTT, we know that d phi by dt is nothing but equals to control volume del del t rho phi, isn't it? Rho phi dx plus control surface rho phi u dot n ds, which is equals to zero. Phi, we know that it's one. So here we can write C V del del T rho T volume plus control surface rho U dot N DS is equals to zero. Now we wanted to convert this integral control surface surface integral into we want to con convert we want to convert convert integral cs to integral cv how do we do this there is a theorem called as gauss divergence theorem which connects this two to uh, two phenomena so if you have this and uh, um, so say any so this problematical thing ds this will be connected to through this del dot rho u and dx okay so this is a connectivity this is a proper theorem uh, in terms of you can write two different uh, variables a b like that or phi a and then you can get this del dot rho u, rho u is a combination dx. Now, if you write substitute this here, then we can write cv and I am writing commonly del rho by del t plus del dot rho u. dx isn't it this is equals to 0 now the this is a any arbitrary control volume arbitrary control volume cv is a arbitrary control volume so what are the the, uh, the things in the So, for any arbitrary control volume, the things inside this in integration, okay, integrand will be equals to 0. That is the meaning. For arbitrary control volume, since this is a control, uh, now pick the control volume which you have shown, but any for any control volume, the inside thing should be 0, okay. So, th this is simply from this equation also you can observe observe but for arbitrary control volume del rho 
del t plus del dot rho u should be equals to 0. Okay. And this is our this is our conservation of mass principle. Okay. So this is our conservation of mass principle. Or this is also called as continuity equation. Continuity equation. Continuity equation. Equation A. Similarly, we can derive equations for um, the conservation of momentum, conservation of energy. Now, this particular form you are looking at is in a vector form. Okay, it is in a vector form. Okay, del is a vector operator. Del is a vector operator. This del, del is a, this is called a del. Del is a vector operator operator which has a de specific definition this operator changes with respect to the coordinate system definition the definition of this del changes with respect to coordinate system for cartesian cartesian coordinate system you will have a different definition then for cylindrical you have the different definition and for spherical coordinate system you have different definition so based on the definition you use you can convert equation a so based on the definition of del based on the on the definition definition of del we can convert we can convert we can convert equation a into a particular form Okay. Say for example, for spherical coordinate, uh, this Cartesian coordinate, in a Cartesian coordinate system, continuity, Cartesian coordinate system, a continuity equation looks like this, del rho, del t plus, so in a Cartesian coordinate system, del is defined as del del x i plus del del y j cap plus del del g k cap okay so using this identity here if you substitute then you get del rho u okay del x plus del rho v del y plus del rho w del z is equals to 0 okay where u velocity u is represented as i u plus j v plus w k w k cap w i j k are unit vectors okay this is the vector uh, you know vectors in a vector space you represent a vector so this is one form we obtain similarly we can get cylindrical spherical coordinate system by using a particular definition or there is another way if you know the rules of transformation from x y g coordinate system cartesian system is x y g coordinate system to say cylindrical coordinate system which is nothing but 
आर थीटा जेड सिस्टम आर थीटा जेड सिस्टम कार्टेशियन इज यू हैव एक्स यू हैव वाई यू हैव जी सो एनी थिंग यू आर पॉइंटिंग यू हैव एक्स यू वी एंड डब्ल्यू इन सिलिंड्रिकल कॉर्डिनेट सिस्टम you have so you have r in once so you have r and then you have theta and then you have z here okay so you have z so you don't have x and y but we you represent that particular you know with respect to r with respect to theta okay with respect to theta and with respect to the z so that if you know the relationship between x y g to r theta g then you can proceed okay so x can be represented as relationship x is equals to r of cos theta and y is equals to r of sin theta and g is transforming as z so g is equals to g and if you use this rules of transformation and use here and use here uh, you can get a system in cylindrical coordinate system as like this del rho del t plus del del r rho u plus rho u plus rho u r plus 1 by r del rho v del theta plus del rho w del z is equals to zero okay so in a cartesian coordinate system same continuity equation looks like this so you have r theta and z similarly you can get a spherical coordinate system in a spherical coordinate system for spherical coordinate system you have a definitions like x is equals to r sin theta uh, sin phi and z is equals to r cos theta if you use this transformation you may get the corresponding equation okay so try to derive this and uh, we'll see uh, the other consequences in the next class